What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Check this out. This pretty much sums up the week that we've had. Nasdaq closes its fifth straight record close, climbing 3% for the week. If you guys remember in last week's video, I laid out the blueprint for what we should expect to take place this week in the markets. I'll tell you guys in that video, there's only one direction the market can go and that is higher. One of the reasons was driven by just the volume of shorts that we had out there. I'm going to do it all over again. I'm going to give you guys a couple of plays and let you know where they'll be going next week in the market. My aim is to always make sure that you guys are looking at the right things, that you guys have the right information that's going to put you in the right lanes, making the right types of moves and choices out there in the market, to cut out the noise and the distractions that are out there because there are many of them. And if you guys are able to do that, you're going to put yourselves in incredible positions to actually go ahead and beat the markets. Before I get into that though, shout out to the guys who are over at the Patreon because there wasn't any trade posted in the Patreon this week, but you guys showed that maturity in waiting for the next trade that is coming next week most definitely. And probably because you guys have made so much money over the last couple of weeks, you guys were like, doesn't matter anyway. The key point is you don't need to trade every single week in the market. Sometimes it might take a week or two before an optimal position presents itself. Then you take that position and then you are rewarded very, very highly, guys. Let's jump into it. The first name I want to share with you guys is Micron. Micron has been a phenomenal earner for myself and those who are over at the Patreon, and that should continue to be the case for the rest of the year. Micron went ahead and made a high this week of around $145. But what I expect to take place next week is actually for the price to cool off. I expect Micron to go ahead and dip, fill that gap of around $135. You guys can see the gap in the charts there. You're gonna see a common theme with the plays I'm gonna show you guys. They all operate in the same types of space, all doing a similar type of thing, and there's very good reason for that. If you guys remember last week in the markets, we had tons and tons of people short. The majority, vast majority of the market was short. As the markets pushed higher, that has now changed. The majority of the market is no longer short. The majority of the market is now long. As a result, what the market will do is it's gonna test those and it's gonna make it harder now to make money on the upside, which is why I'm predicting we get a pullback in the markets next week for a couple of other reasons as well. So Micron's the first one. The second one is Qcom, Qualcomm. So again, similar type of space, semiconductor name. If you look, it's made this twin peak uh, price action going on at around $217. I don't expect that to be taken out immediately. As a matter of fact, I, was, I expect the opposite for it to go ahead and close that gap of around $209. What you guys will notice is you're now seeing the same type of structural setup on these same types of names. And this is key. When you're able to identify and spot that, it often leads to very uh, successful and very powerful moves because the whole space, the whole sector just reacts and moves together. So what will happen is it's leaving clues. You're seeing the same types of clues on different types of names and that just creates a much, much better setup. And the last one is AMD. We have a gap down towards 153, which I expect next week in the markets for it to go ahead and close that gap of around, at around 153. So dropping a couple of percentage points. Now, these probably all actually lead to optimal call option trades once this gap is filled, but that's a conversation for the end of next week. What I'm expecting in the short term though, is a pullback, is a bit of a sell-off, is some profit taking to take place once again, goes ahead and satisfies what it needs to do, then we're gonna see a, a different type of action in the charts. But that's what I expect for next week, so you guys keep an eye out for that. We have Mohammed from over the Patreon says, great insight onto how you knew when to enter into the trade, but how did you find the stock? So Mohammed is talking about 
the strategy video that I post over the Patreon, which is a great watch. If you haven't already seen that, make sure you watch that on our Micron trade, going through everything, why I entered, the setup I looked at, etc. This is where I struggle. Any help, much appreciated. So there's really four things when it comes to actually selecting the stock. It's pretty simple. The first is just going to be the technicals. So you want a good technical structure. Listen, there's thousands of stocks out there in the market, but the majority of them show a terrible pattern. The cleaner the pattern, the crisper the pattern, the smoother the direction, the more high quality that name is going to be. Fundamentals is another one, often overlooked by most people. These companies release their earnings four times a year. So that gives a clue on how well they're performing. If they're gonna, if you're gonna be looking to go long and the company's performing well, that's just a cherry on the cake. The next is gonna be thematic. So are they involved in any mega, mega themes? There's always mega themes going on in the markets. If you could tap into those, that is a good idea. So this year, major themes, AI, war, if you're able to tap into those, you're going to be onto a winner. So obviously Micron's in AI. If you guys remember last week, I told you about CrowdStrike and how that is most definitely going to go higher, which it did. Well, that's tapping into the theme of war because that's a defensive play. And then the last is going to be the size. So typically I want something that's 100 billion and up because then they're not going to be susceptible to any types of, or well, it reduces the risk of them being manipulated directly or indirectly when you start going sub that number companies that are you know 10 million in market cap 100 million in market cap there's a likelihood that at some point in time or very frequently that price can just get manipulated for whatever reason when you go 100 billion and up you've moved into a different class you've moved into a higher class of asset where things like that don't happen so at the top of the food chain is going to be your indexes like your um, S&P 500, for example, which is like, what, 25 trillion in size. And then below that, you're going to get your large caps, which is a couple of trillion. And then you're going to start to move to your bigger stocks, which are like a couple hundred billion like Micron is. I stick in that realm. There's no really real need to kind of deviate outside of that. It's just going to make your lives more difficult than you need it to be. So 100 billion up, that's absolutely fine. Guys, that is the video for today and I'll catch you guys in the next one.